Hey everyone, it's... What in the world? Hey everyone, so we're here at my shop down at Spro in Hamden in Baltimore. And we've been work today I've been working with the, the La Pavone Professional Lusso that my friend Di asked me to rebuild. And so I wanted to get used to it and get a feel for the, the espresso machine because I don't really get to use home machines very often, especially like these kind of older school espresso machines that's just a heating element, a single boiler that is um, at full pressure. So just thought I'd give some of my initial comments on it. It's a pretty interesting machine. You know, I came in this morning and plugged it in and filled it up and actually I wasn't really sure how far to fill it up. So I filled it up to the very rim and then realized that, well, actually it kind of scared me because I know it's going to be under pressure. And, you know, even though that there's an escape valve on the machine, you know, would that work? If it, what if there's a failure and the whole thing blows up or, or something crazy, you know, that's what you don't really want. So I backed it off and I, there's a di there's an indentation on the, the tank that I'm guessing is probably where it should be filled. So I dumped out the water and left it there, then started to heat it up. And the water is pretty cold because it's pretty cold today. It's in, like, in the low 20s today here in Baltimore. So the water is pretty cold. It took uh, about 15 minutes to heat up, which, you know, when I'm sitting at, when I was sitting there, I thought it's kind of a long time, but really it's no, no slower than, uh, than the commercial Lumber Zoco that we have here. Uh, when we turn it on in the mornings, it takes, we give it about 15 minutes for it to fully heat up. And so that's, that's actually pretty good. The thing about the, the machine using it is that unlike a commercial machine or unlike some of the more modern types of home espresso machines where the boiler is internal to the body and the, and the chassis, the professional is basically just the boiler and all the components are, are really hot. I mean, they're at, they're at what, 0.95 bar, which is you know, 200, 25 or so degrees Fahrenheit so they're fairly hot and so pretty much the entire machine is a burn center waiting to happen so if you touch any part of the machine it's pretty hot if you if you don't remove your hand it's going to burn you I mean it'll singe your skin maybe a little bit yes yeah, so and that's a little bit unpleasant even the porta filter after you leave it sitting in the machine gets pretty darn hot and that's not fun so anything you may touch, like so, as I'm working with it today, I, I, you know, I'm invariably like you know, brushing up against it or something, and, and yeah, you get a little bit of a. I don't have any burns per se, but you definitely, it's definitely not a. It's not a pleasant way to work, you know. When you're working around other types of machines that have chassis and housing, you don't really have to work with that. You can lean up against the, the housing, and not a big deal. So that's a, a new way to work around. The portafilters are pretty small. There's the regular portafilter that has to spout. And then I also got one of the bottomless. And the way the spouts are, you know, you've got the, and, and the way the portafilter locks into the machine is reversed than most professional. Most professional machines, you drop in the center and then you twist to the right. So your handle's off to the right on the La Pavone Professional. It goes up and then into the left. Well, I guess from your perspective, it goes this way. My perspective is this way, right? So it goes up and to the left. So it's just, when you're used to a different workflow, it's just kind of um, different and strange. So that's not a big deal. But the, the other side of it is that it, there's, since there's no real weight or weightiness to the entire unit, as you're trying to put it, the port filter in, it kind of lifts the machine because there's nothing really to hold it down. You know, like on on the La Valentina E61 base group head machine that I have at the roastery, that's for the home user, or the, of course, the big Lama Zorco professional machines, they're of enough mass and weight that when you push the portafilter and you try to lock it, the machine doesn't move. So the machine, well, the machine comes with a portafilter, and this portafilter, you know, typical, looks like it's, you know, chrome plated brass with this spout on it. And the thing is, when you put it into, from your perspective, when you put it into the machine like this, it gives you the correct orientation, or a nice orientation for your cup. So it looks, it looks 
it, it looks correct visually. However, the problem is when you do it this way is that when you put onto a surface, it, it doesn't want to stand because it no longer has three points to stand on, right? Because it uses three points with the bottom of the hand. So it falls over, rendering it pretty, pretty difficult to use. The other side of it is that there, Dai did get a him, he did buy a bottomless portafilter. And so those of you who are familiar with the bottomless, these have our portafilters with the, with the bottoms cut out. And these are great tools because it allows you to, you know, see any, so when you're, when you're pulling a shot at, you can actually see the formation of the shot up from the bottom of the, the portafilter screen and see if there's any kinds of channeling issues or problems. And also one of the added benefits is that you can put taller cupware, right? Because there are two different types of baskets. There is the, the normal double shot basket and their triple shot basket for the La Pavone. Now these are really, I think they're a bit of a misnomer. I, I actually didn't get a chance today to, to fully play around with this. I did one shot with it, but the double basket, you can jam, I can jam in 12 grams into this. So I'm suspecting this will hold maybe upwards of 15 grams, maybe 16 grams. So really if, if this is a 12 gram bat, but at 12 grams though, it's a pretty slow shot. As you can see in the video, it's pretty slow. 10 grams seems to be the right amount for this basket. And I did pull 10 grams in the, the triple shot basket and that worked out pretty well. So 10 grams seems to be a good compromise in the Lapaponi Professional, at least for my initial testing. And it does work pretty well. So we're talking 10 gram basket or 10 gram doubles. So. It's a little bit more that, you know, if we're, if we're following the, uh, the old Illy standard of seven grams per single shot, you know, it's definitely a little bit, it's more than that. So it's, it's not quite a 14 gram double. I mean, I don't know if you could even put 14 grams in this. You probably have to use the triple basket and the triple basket does not fit fully into this porter, the spotted porter filter because it, it just basically sits too high the seam sits too high and it will not lock into the machine so that so in order for you to use this larger basket you do have to go with the bottomless because that gives you more clearance at the bottom so um i think that the results are quite decent i was rather pleased with some of the shots that came out i was actually surprised that the extraction looked really nice and thick and rich and the, the crema was dark and there was crema, you know, I wasn't, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I guess I should expect pretty good because, I mean, this machine's been around since, what, 1977 or something like that. So, where the, the basic version of it has been around since Bezerra started making espresso machines in the 20s. So, purists may kind of uh, wonder or be concerned about is that there is no real way of controlling the temperature. You know, you're heating up to 0 0.8, 0 0.95 bars, one bar or more. Actually, I couldn't get it to even reach one bar during the heat up cycle. So it would heat up to like 0 0.95 and then drop back down maybe to 0 0.85, then maybe it'll come back up. I, it's not a PID. Basically, it's, it's hot. The water is hotter than you really want for brewing. It's pretty hot and you can try flushing it. It's not like a heat exchange machine, right? Where, where you're pushing water through a, a, a heated boiler and only that small segment is superheated. The entire boiler is superheated, so you really can't flush it. You're just really stuck working with whatever temperature that boiler is at that moment. I did think some of the coffee shots that I pulled were very pleasant and within an enjoyable range for espresso. So my initial reaction to using the professional, the La Pomoni Professional, has been so far very positive. It is a hot machine with exposed parts, so you're gonna burn yourself if you're not careful. Uh, the steam power on the machine is weak. I mean, it, it took my 12 ounce pitcher, so I'm using probably about six ounces of milk in the 12 ounce pitcher, and it did heat it to full temperature. You know, it brought it to like 170 degrees. So it's going to work, it's gonna heat your milk. However, where the problem so far lies is it just doesn't have enough oomph to really power that much milk. So 
maybe if you're using a small pitcher with smaller quantities of milk, and I would say maybe in the three to four ounce um, category, it's got enough oomph. It's got a three hole nozzle steam bond tip on it. But the steam wand is, itself is really narrow. It's really a narrow diameter, so it doesn't really let a lot of, it doesn't have a lot of flow. So I think that's where it doesn't have enough oomph. Now, I wonder if the reason that it's so thin is because the boiler is relatively so small, right? So if you had a bigger, if you had a bigger passageway, would it just blow out all the steam, you know, and you, then you'd have a hard time recovering. So that could be part of the equation. But it, it doesn't, for six ounces of milk, it really takes, it really takes a while for it to heat up. But more importantly, it doesn't really have enough power to froth the milk and push it under, right? Because when you're frothing milk and you want to get really nice milk texture, what you're trying to do is turn the, the foam into the milk. You know, you're trying to pass it and, and circle it around through the, circulate it through the milk so that it's constantly getting wet from the milk and it's also keeping a micro bubble and giving it nice texture. The professional just doesn't have that kind of oomph. So that's pretty much my initial impressions. It's uh, pretty good. I, I kind of like it. It's um, a little bit, to me, a little bit nerve wracking that, you know, you could, theoretically, you could unscrew the the top of the of the boiler and it would explode hot water all over the place, scalding whoever's in the range. Uh, but really, you gotta really be kind of like not thinking in order to do that. So hopefully people don't do that. Hopefully I don't do that. That's really the concern. But that's my initial impressions. We're gonna be we're, I'm gonna be working with it a little bit more to get uh, just to get a little more familiar with it to get a little bit more of a feel for the machine and see, you know, what I think about its performance before we start to tear it apart and rebuild it. Hope that works for you. So uh, don't forget to check out these videos. They've been selected for you by YouTube. And if you have a chance, you know, subscribe, like the video and all that kind of stuff that you normally do for other YouTubers. I sure would appreciate it. See you next time.